Okay. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. In this, I would like to show you how to set up a leaf and money farm, which acts as a secondary source of income so that you can build your zoo like you want it to build without any restrictions. And the way this works is basically that this money farm or leaf farm supports you while you build your own zoo. So um, it isn't a part of your zoo. It's um, placed somewhere off, as you can see here. And this is a very old version. Um, I have a better one for you. But just to show you the general idea of this principle. So you build your zoo like you normally do, but you have almost unlimited money and leaves. And you also have the themes researched already so you have all the freedom to build what you want more or less right from the start so you don't have the restriction to have to build a zoo step by step and then replacing uh, things because you didn't have the themes research you can start right off in the way you want your zoo to look like so the first thing we're gonna do right when you start a new franchise zoo is to take a loan and take the biggest one. Don't worry, we will easily be able to pay it back and even make a profit. So don't worry about that for now. Next thing is you have to place the workshop blueprint item. There's a link in the description where you can subscribe to it and as soon as you do, it should show up in your games tab under blueprints. But of course you can build your own, the blueprint is just there to help you. So the next step is to build the paths and as we all know in this game paths can be a tricky thing to work with so you have to you know try and error things out and feel free to remove paths again if it doesn't work like I do in this video just make sure that every door is connected then also build a path around the farm itself for the visitors to actually go around and see the animals and spend some money, of course. Next thing on the list is to place the barriers. And with that we use non-barriers because I provide fences already in, um, with this blueprint. But if you build your own, you of course use whatever you want. And when you're done with the fence, um, you only have to place the entrance and it can be a bit tricky so you may have to move the fence around a little bit just try to place the door in between the gaps I left so that the um, animals can't escape then we need some staff I went for three keepers one mechanic one doctor and one zookeeper but as it turned out four keepers are actually better basically one for each habitat Right, next we're gonna buy some animals and with this uh, blueprint I've already uh, built the habitats for certain animals but you can go for other ones like, if you want to. Just go for easy to keep ones and cheap ones so uh, don't buy a lion or something it has, that won't work. If you want to stick to the blueprint I provided then uh, go for the animals listed right now and also go for the ratio I, I provided. It will give you the best results. As soon as you have one of each animal in total four species, place them in the habitats and resume the game for a second until the keepers have uh, brought the animals into their habitats. The reason for that, as soon as they're in the habitat we can see their needs and also alter the um, habitat depending on that. Don't forget to pause it after that or your animals will start complaining. As soon as they're all in and you pause the game, just click on them, check their needs and alter the habitat depending on that, as you usually do in Planet Zoo. In terms of guest facilities, you can place drinks or food stands and you will make a profit because it will attract a lot of visitors. I just, I didn't because uh, I didn't feel the need to. But what you have to place are those spending boxes. They will bring in a ton of money and place enough of them. 
All right, next we're gonna do the work zones. The only important thing here is uh, for the keepers, for example, give them one keeper hat, the staff room, and the habitat. In this example, I grouped two habitats and created just one work zone out of that. But you can create one work zone for each habitat. It's probably the best way with four keepers. Then also create the work zone for the mechanic. For that you need the uh, power supply, the water supply, the habitats, the research center for the mechanic, and of course the staff room again. Also don't forget to give the work zones a good name, because uh, when your zoo grows it will become hard to keep track of what is which. As mentioned before, I only have three keepers, so I have two keepers for the let's say more intense habitats that is pigs and peafalls because they reproduce like crazy and just one for the tortoise and the flamingos because they usually don't need that much work now we're already at the last step and that is research so the research has multiple advantages but i think the most important one for our farm is the higher reproduction rate so with certain levels, you will get a boost to the reproduction chance of the animal. And also with the toys and food enrichments you unlock, the reproduction will also increase. And the cool thing with uh, those four animals is that you can actually use certain toy and food enrichments for more than one animal. So if you research one animal and unlock items there, you can use them on the others too. For example, the sprinkler. They all like the sprinkler, all four animals. So yeah, that's basically what you do. Research all animals and uh, as soon as you unlock something, place it in the habitat to make the animals happier and boost their reproduction rate. All right, and that's basically the whole setup. And now we're looking at how to manage the whole thing. So with the type of animals that we have chosen here, you will get tons of notification of fights in the habitat or too many animals in one habitat. And whenever that occurs, you just, you either go to the zoo tab or what you can do is go to the or click on the fence and just release into the wild and for example with the pigs there can only be one male per group so whenever you have another one release into the wild uh, don't worry about uh, incest it, it will happen but our main goal is not to create a very good species or uh, breed certain stats we just want to farm money and leaves and for that even the incest ones are good enough. And that sounds very wrong as I'm saying it, but you know. <laughs> but yeah, keep a certain amount of animals in the habitat at all time and just release all the other ones. And that's basically how you farm. Now, one which problem you will run into is disease. Because with, with so many animals, especially with the peafall, as soon as the disease starts to spread, you have a problem. So try to manage the animals in a way that there are not too many of them in one habitat at every given time. But if it happens with the disease, just put them all into quarantine. There's a quarantine in the blueprint and your doctor will take care of it. Just act fast. That's, that's the main premise here, act fast. And even if if all animals die in one habitat, it's not too bad, just buy new ones. And that sounds wrong again as I'm saying it. <laughs> oh man, you, you must think I'm a terrible person to animals or something, but let me just say, I, I'm not. I, I love animals, it's just, uh, you know, the way the game works. <laughs> Alright, and that's all. Your farm is set up, you're free to build your zoo now. And the farm will give you the backup you need when something goes wrong. You have all, of, all the things researched you want, you have money, you have leaves, so 
there you go. If you have questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I'm happy to help. Also, if you have feedback, put that in the comment section below too. I would like to know. And until next time, see ya.